Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Attack of the Werewolves It'll be fun, they said. You'll have a blast, they said. Madison Tucker kept repeating those phrases over and over in her head. That's what her parents tried to convince her of. A weekend getaway to Pine Forest Acres in a cabin in the woods. Sure, it sounded nice and relaxing. It should have been the perfect way to spend a summer weekend. But what her parents didn't take into consideration were the werewolves. Dozens of them. The howls woke Madison up a little after midnight. Her parents heard them too, not long after she did, and the three of them gathered together on the first floor of the cabin. Mr. Tucker held a crowbar for protection. It wasn't the best weapon, but it was all he had and it definitely beat her mom's weapon of choice, rubber tongs. You do better, Mrs. Tucker shouted when she saw her daughter scoff at her tongs. Madison just shook her head. Through the windows of the cabin, the Tucker family could see the dozen or more werewolves frantically running around the house. Some peered in through the glass, their large yellow eyes glowing in the darkness outside. Some banged on the walls and front door, rattling the generic framed landscape photos of the local wilderness. What are we going to do? Mrs. Tucker cried, snapping the tongs together in her grip. There's only one thing we can do, Mr. Tucker heroically said, puffing out his chest and smacking the crowbar into the palm of his free hand. We fight for what's ours. We fight for this rented cabin. This place was too expensive to just throw away on some freak werewolf attack. Mr. Tucker bravely charged the front door. Dad, no! Madison cried. Her dad stopped at the door after placing one hand on the knob. He turned to his daughter and smiled. This cabin has a non-refundable down payment, Madison. I'm not going to let these monsters ruin our good time. I'm going to wipe them all out single-handedly, and then in the morning, I'm going to complain to management." But before Mr. Tucker could finish his Karen-esque speech, the front door crashed open, and a brooding werewolf pounced in on all fours. It stood several feet taller than Mr. Tucker, covered from head to toe with jet black hair. It was built like a perfect physical specimen. It lifted its clawed hands in the air, snarling with malice, and displayed its razor-sharp teeth. Its eyes widened and glowed hypnotically. Mr. Tucker, gripping the crowbar like a baseball bat, I hold the record for the most RBIs in my high school's history! Mr. Tucker harassed the snarling beast. Need proof? Mr. Tucker swung the crowbar, but the werewolf dodged it. The beast then swung its arm and knocked the crowbar out of Mr. Tucker's hand. Honey, no! Mrs. Tucker shouted, still mindlessly snapping the tongs together. The werewolf barreled down on Mr. Tucker, sinking its teeth into his shoulder. Mr. Tucker screamed and collapsed to the floor. In the doorway, two other werewolves appeared as full silhouettes with the full moon at their backs. Madison, run! Mrs. Tucker shouted, throwing the tongs at the incoming monsters. Madison ducked behind the couch and pulled a blanket down over her head. Mrs. Tucker turned to run, but was stopped in her tracks by another werewolf crashing through one of the windows. It landed on the floor with an earth-shaking thud as glass shattered all around it. 
The beast roared at Mrs. Tucker and grabbed her. No! Let go! She screamed. I'm not food! But the werewolf didn't care. It bit down hard on Mrs. Tucker. Under the blanket, behind the couch, Madison shivered as she heard her mother's screams come to an abrupt stop. Come to think of it, all the noise had stopped. She didn't hear the werewolves anymore. There was no snarling, no roars, no gnashing of teeth. The world now sat in unnerving silence. Madison slowly removed the blanket from over her head and stood up. She saw people standing around now, not werewolves. There was one man in tattered clothing standing over her mom's body. Three others, two men and a woman, stood over her dad who was sprawled out on the floor. Through the front door of the cabin she saw many other people lurking around outside in the dark where there had just been monsters. What's going on? Madison stammered. The man in the tattered clothing who loomed over Mrs. Tucker walked up to Madison and reached his hand out in a friendly way and not a menacing one. These woods are marked by the werewolves' curse, he said. They have been for centuries, and the arrogant, money-hungry owners of Pine Forest Acres know that. But as long as they get their money, they don't care what happens to the people who choose to rent these cabins. The woman who took out Mr. Tucker came up to Madison next. She wore a friendly smile on her face and placed a comforting hand on Madison's shoulder. We would never hurt a child, she said. I have two daughters of my own. They come and visit me here every summer. Madison wasn't sure what to make of anything that was happening around her. Then what's going on here? she asked. Are my parents okay? Mr. and Mrs. Tucker then groggily stood up their wounds healing magically in front of Madison's eyes. They're fine, the man in the tattered clothing said. They're part of our pack now. We're building our pack, our army, and when we have plenty in numbers, we are going to attack the owners, the greedy people who knew and didn't care that this would happen to us. They need to pay for their nefarious deeds. They deserve to pay. Mr. Tucker said. They ripped us off big time, Madison, and now it's our turn to rip them. Mr. Tucker flexed his muscles. Plus, I feel incredible. Me too, Mrs. Tucker agreed, striking a pose like a bodybuilder. You, you, you guys are, are, are okay? Madison asked. Never, Never better, better, Mr. and Mrs. Tucker said in unison. And when you're older, Madison, the woman next to her said, you can also join the pack if you choose to. A howl erupted outside. All of the grown-ups in the cabin turned and looked out the front door, sniffing something in the air like it was an instinctual notion. There's another cabin nearby. More people to recruit, the woman sensed. Madison watched them all, including her own parents, start to sprout black hairs from their skin. Their bodies transformed before her very eyes into large, brooding monsters covered in black fur. Their eyes all glowed yellow. They snarled and began to growl. Madison's parents, now creatures of the night, patted their little girl on the head. And then, all at once, the pack of werewolves bounded from the cabin on all fours, roaring, howling, and on a mission to claim more for their vengeful army. Madison just stood there alone in the cabin, trying to comprehend everything that just played out. And then she thought with a tingling excitement, I wonder how old I have to be to join the pack. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. 
I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors – Scary Stories for Kids. Hey Weirdos! Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.